Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Adrian, and today I'm going to be talking about 30 St. Mary's Acts, or more commonly known as the Gherkin. Over spring break, I was lucky enough to be able to go on a trip to this amazing site and learn about it. This building was way ahead of its time and helped kick off the skyscraper era in London. This building was designed by Norman Foster and a root group and was completed in December of 2003. Standing at 80 meters or 591 feet, with 41 floors, this building has quickly become one of the most recognizable architectural sites in London. In 1996, Trafalgar House submitted plans to the Millennium Tower, a 386 meter or 1,266 feet building with more than 140,000 meters squared or 1.5 million square feet of office space, apartments, shops, restaurants, and gardens. This plan was dropped after objections for being totally out of scale with the City of London and anticipated disruption to flight paths from both London City and London Heathrow airports. The revised plan for a lower tower was later accepted. The nickname The Gherkin is just another name for a pickled cucumber. This name is obviously inspired by the shape. However, the architects were inspired by the body of a plane. Generated by a circular plan with the radial geometry, the building widens in profile as it rises and tapers towards the top. The gherkin responds to the constraints of the site as the building appears more slender than a rectangular block of the equivalent size and slimming its profile towards the base maximizes the public realm at the street level. Its profile reduces wind deflections compared to a rectangular tower of a similar size, helping to maintain a comfortable environment at ground level and creates external pressure differentials that are exploited to drive a unique system of natural ventilation. We'll come back to that. The gherkin is essentially an elongated, curved shaft with a rounded end that is reminiscent of a stretched egg. It is covered uniformly around the outside with glass panels and is rounded off at the corners. It has a lens-like dome at the top that serves as a type of observation deck. Despite the shape, there is only one actually curved glass, which is at the piece at the very top. Moving on to structure, in most modern rectangular buildings, the structure follows Le Corbusier's principles of a free plan and a free face. This building was very different from the more orthodox way of designing the structure due to its round barrel-like shape. The structure is really the triangular exoskeleton that surrounds the building. There are two major structure elements in the exoskeleton. The diagrid, which resists horizontal and gravitational loads, as well as the core, which just resists gravitational loads. The diagrid is very common in architecture seen in many buildings like John Hancock Center. As mentioned before, the gherkin creates an optimal shape in terms of aerodynamics to allow wind to essentially go right around it. Similar to how cars work, the air goes around it and reduces stress in the air and wind flow. As the climate begins to change, buildings have had to become more sustainable. However, the gherkin was way ahead of its time, built in the late 90s and early 2000s. Global warming was definitely still a thing, but it wasn't as prevalent as it was now and it's nice to see efforts to create gear into buildings. There are many ways this building acts sustainable. The most obvious is the shape of the building and the floor plan. There are little breaks in the floor and the building uses this as natural ventilation from the black ribs on the outside. The double skin facade zones encased by clear glazing provide up to 85% sun protection. In addition, the air between curtain wall layers will absorb solar heat, rise to the stack effect, and vent to the exterior through narrow slits at the top of each two-story structural bay. Gas is used as the primary source of energy in the building, which helps shrink the gherkin's carbon footprint. The fact that it is mostly glass is also helpful in terms of lighting. Reliance on energy for lights is heavily decreased due to the surplus of natural sunlight. This game changer in terms of skyscrapers was a perfect building to represent the turn of the millennia. It innovates in design, structure, and sustainability.